growing demand for electricity as a result of increasing economic activities underscored the need for Ghana to increase her generating capacity to match the demand. This plays responsibility on the John Ajakumkofo administration to start processes for the construction of another hydropower generation dam to augment the Akustambo hydropower generation dam. In 2007, Bui Power Authority was established by an Act of Parliament with a mandate to plan, execute and manage the Bui hydroelectric project which includes construction of a dam and powerhouse installation of a 400 megawatts generating plant and other infrastructure forming an integral part of the project. Since its inception, the BPA has been focusing on only hydropower generation. Ghana is a signatory to the Paris Climate Change Agreement and as part of the commitment, the country intends to increase its renewable energy sources in the national energy mix by 10%. To this end, BPA's Act 2007, Act 740, has been amended to allow the authority plan, design and execute renewable energy projects. To achieve this mandate, the authority in February this year cut the sword for the construction of a 50 MW peak solar power park at Bui. The 50 MW peak solar power park, which is situated on 200 acres of land, is in two phases. The BPA targeted 10 MW peak out of the 50 MW peak for the first phase. However, the authority has surpassed it and has installed more than 15 MW peak during a visit to the site by the team from EnergyNewsAfrica.com. The first phase of the project is due for commissioning. Fred Oware, the CEO of We Power Authority, explained the genesis of the project. It's been the... Uh part of the policy decision of this country to increase the solar component of our energy generation up to about 10% of the total mix uh, by the year 2030. And uh, Bui is taking the lead in the uh, generation of uh, solar energy in the country. We prepared ourselves to generate by uh, in the next two three years or so a total of 250 megawatts the switch yard of which was completed middle of uh, 2017 and the government's objective is to for us to grow this installation by phases so that as we do that, we also acquire the experience. Well, this will be the first time that we put uh, the solar energy onto the national grid. He added the authority would continue to add up until the 50 megawatts peak target is achieved. We're going to have a total of 100 megawatts. We're doing that in two major phases of 50-50. Even within the first 50, we're doing the first 10 just so we'll be able to acquire the experience and then we'll add on the 40 and then we'll add on the other uh, 50 to get 100. I presume this will take us to the end of uh, 2021 by which time some preparations would have also been made in completing a fair percentage of the civil works towards the 150 which in my judgment would con should commence somewhere around 2022. By 2024, we should have finished all the 240. The outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic has disrupted the activities of most companies, with some suspending projects they intended to execute. That, however, is not same for the BPA. So, what did BPA do differently to ensure the project stayed on course despite the outbreak of coronavirus? Fred Owari explains. I'm very proud of the engineers that I'm, I'm working with. Uh, in December, we read on the international news that uh, uh, this thing was probably going to be global, the pandemic. Uh, we, by January, we had put in place uh, some uh, mitigation uh, policies to make sure 
that will continue working. By uh, early March, we actually had implemented our lockdown uh, decisions. In fact, two weeks before the government you know, came out to lockdown. And we did not allow anybody working here to go home. We didn't allow anybody also to come here. And so we provided all the logistics, food, and all beyond the PPEs, everything that they needed to live a decent life on the plant, we provided them and make sure that nobody went out in terms of their medical needs. We supplied everything right down to the needs of their family members. So, so we, we managed the process properly and, and that allowed us to continue to work. With a local content policy in place, EnergyNewsAfrica.com found out how the project has benefited the local people. We've seen around, we've seen people working. Uh, we, I think I can tell you that about 200 or more people have had jobs and this thing will continue till uh, maybe the end of the first quarter of next year, which means uh, about 200 people or so who would have been jobless are going to uh, benefit and they are benefiting from it. Once we finished, we have enough material to continue with the second phase. So I, I can say that for the next three years or so, it's possible that this number might increase from the 200 to about 300 who will be in gainful employment for the period. Per the authority's plan, it would be able to develop 2,500 megawatts of renewable energy in line with government's vision to ensure that 10% of the country's energy mix is renewable. We'll continue working. As you can see, all the panels are here, all the equipment we need are here for us. It's just to make a statement that uh, we have been working quietly behind the scenes, but it's time now for us to come out and demonstrate to uh, the whole world that we are doing this in Africa, in Ghana, and I believe once we finish the 250 uh, by next year or so, we definitely will be the biggest on the continent. He commended the engineers and all staff for their support to ensure the project stayed on course. Board Chairman Ambassador Afari Apiedu Donko, who said he is satisfied with the progress of work, also commended the staff for working to ensure that the project was completed, adding on to the country's energy mix. Since the inception of the project, and this is not my first visit, there have been several visits, and each time it doesn't cease to amaze me as to the progress that has been made. Uh, we are now the uh, leading exponents of uh, this new ways of generating energy. Instead of these fossil fuels, we are now into solar energy. And that's what we are here to take a good look at. I would rather, apart from commending the workers for a good job done so far, and they'll continue to do a good job, uh, commend them for the expansion that we have in place. That will render or give more employment to the people in the area. Uh, weeding and clearing debris and grass and making sure that the systems work properly. It's all part of the drill. Earlier this year, the Director of Renewable and Alternative Energies at the Ministry of Energy, Wisdom Ahiataku Togobo, who led a team from the Ministry to tour the facility said the team was impressed by the progress made and was hopeful the first phase will be completed as planned. I've seen that most of the structures are in place and I'm very much impressed. If this is done as it's been planned by December 2020, it will become the largest single solar park in Ghana and for that matter in the sub-region. And I think it's a plus to government and it's a plus towards achieving our target to increase the penetration of renewable energy by 10% by the year 2030. We are making a lot of efforts to add more renewables into our systems. Today, in terms of grid connected, we have only up to about 42.5 megawatts. There are projects in line, including this, that will take us up to about 126 megawatts before the end of the year. So, successful completion of this 
play a significant role in achieving government's targets, at least by the end of 2020. And for that matter, I want to congratulate them for their job they are doing. I also realize that from the rate at which work is going on, I'm very convinced that they will be able to meet the timeline. With the recent commissioning of VRA's 6.54 megawatts peak solar park at Laura in the Upper West Region, Ghana's total utility scale installed solar capacity now stands at 49 megawatts. The successful completion of the Bui Power Authority's project will play a significant role in achieving government target for 2020. The chief of Bui, Nana Kwajo Wu II, commended BPA for their contributions to the Bui enclave. They've made a lot of impact because if you look at it uh, in, in, in other areas, the positive side is more than the negative. The positive is, is more than the negative. Yes, because they've brought a lot of improvement uh, in our living standards and in all spheres of life. Even though we have lost our land, but that one, you know, is something that is, you know, you, you, can't, you can't eat your cake and have it. But all the same, I think we've, we've, we've made a lot of progress. Because even if you have been staying there, uh, wherever we were staying, before we even came here, uh, or before Bipower came, uh, we wouldn't have added value to our lives. But Bipower has been able to add value. To, to, to our lives, especially they've created employment. The youth was initially, they were, there was no employment. But now they've created avenues, opportunities for the youth to be employed. And by so be many of the youth are gainfully employed now. Accessibility, previously it was not easy when we were traveling. But now the, roads, um, the road network is very easy now. If you want to travel within seconds, you are in Wichi. As part of the company's corporate social responsibilities, some completed facilities have been handed over to the chiefs and people of the community to help foster peace and unity between the authority and the locals.